All right, we got an update here from Seven. Seven Wanders the World. Uh, thank you for your incredible support. This is the guy who had his uh, truck stolen a couple days ago there in Colorado. Um, <clears throat> he was not linked to his trailer, and he had his uh, he had his title in the vehicle, and the title wasn't in his name yet because he just bought it over in Nevada, and somebody came by in a car with no license plates or vehicle with no license plates, and they stole his truck, and they haven't been able to recover it, and that's what's gone on. So he immediately put up a GoFundMe page. He was asking for about $7,000, and... I, I, he, again, we don't know how much he made totally there. If you look up the GoFundMe that he links to in his uh, description there, it just says this. So anyway, so whatever he made, <laughs> he made enough money, he said, to get a new vehicle. He is trying to get the money transferred over to his uh, bank account, but that takes about a week on PayPal, on, on pay, what is it? GoFundMe, right? And, but he said he's very thankful for everybody that's come to his aid. And he's um, in a bit, He's now staying at some friend's house there in the Denver area. And he's moving all of his stuff out of his trailer into these storage things in the garage. And he is waiting for that money to get transferred over to his bank account before he goes and buys a vehicle. He was looking at some trucks and he found a few that he liked, but he has to wait for that money to become available. So that's that. So that's the latest from Seven Wanders the World and his his stolen truck. Okay, so uh, the link apparently he put to his GoFundMe in his latest video was not working properly. But I went back to his original video. My truck was stolen. And here's his original GoFundMe. This was the original. He had the right address on the original one. So he made $11,000 out of his seven thousand dollar seven 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 goal there, so uh, so yeah, he did pretty well. He, you know, got uh, you know over three thousand dollars more than what his goal was. So, but don't 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 forget, don't forget. And I guess it's still working. It's still activated, so you can still help money anyway. Go fund me seven gray emergency fund is what it is, seven dash gray emergency dash fund, whatever. So uh, if you want to help out, there it is. But remember, these those funds are taxable at tax time. Just remember that, you know, it's the government wants their share of some of that. Hey, we're hearing from the Camo Dave News Army that there will be officially an RTR for 2022 in January coming up in about seven months, okay? Uh, Bob Wells, Homes on Wheels Alliance, that's all. They're, they're going to make a bigger and better one than the last few years. You'll have to remember, if you do, this past RTR, the January 2021 one was the pandemic RTR. They did not have an official RTR, Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. However, uh, they didn't even have any seminars other than some stuff that was on online. So there was pretty much nothing other than you can come and camp on BLM land, which a lot of people still did. The year before that was 20, the, uh, P, the RTR 2020. And that was the year that basically you were on your own about camping, uh, but they did have the seminars officially at that uh, fairground there, which was between Parker and uh, Quartzsite, which was largely unattended. A lot of people didn't even go to that. This year, we're hearing that we're getting we're ramping up to something more substantial than the past two years, where they'll actually may have some private land where you can go and camp officially with Bob and do the seminars. So we're looking at this year, 2022, which is seven months away, to back to maybe a more official RTR with actual allotted campground area. That still means you can still go to the BLM land there in Arizona Quartzsite and go camp wherever you want and participate, but we're gonna be getting back to a bigger and better and more official RTR for 2022. That's what we're hearing from our sources. So stay tuned and we'll keep you, we'll give you the latest news right here on the Camo Dave channel. Paula has a good point here. Oh, let's do some letters. Paula has a good point here. Let's do some letters. Paula has a good point here. She's talking about uh, Dawn with Van Life this morning who did a video about the fact that somebody crawled up under her vehicle and stole her catalytic converter there in Oakland, California. Okay, which is rampant throughout the Bay Area there. A lot of people are having their catalytic converters stolen because I guess there's some 
fancy schmancy elements in there, metals or whatever, that you can get some money on. Anyway, what Paula says is, I don't understand. You have, you know, Dawn has a job. She has job money from YouTube, plus viewers send you stuff to build sponsors such as Jackery and stuff, power banks for your power. The first thing to do would have been to make a call and report, uh, call, call the police and report it, but then also contact your insurance. You know, people are jumping on, send me money, doing live chats and trying to suggest that you send them money, and they haven't even contacted their insurance yet. Will insurance pay for a stolen catalytic converter? It's a theft. It's something stolen off your vehicle. Your vehicle's insured. Do you, you may not have that kind of insurance. I don't know. Anyway, there's some more, there's, what we're saying is, with Dawn of Van Life, there's questions still out there. It seems like people just jump on, <laughs> the fundraising before they actually have thought out the problem yet. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think what Dawn had said originally was that she had to get commercial insurance because it was a box truck, okay? And I don't know, does the commercial insurance cover the theft of an important part of the vehicle, the catalytic converter? I don't know, man! Uh, Bentley Nixon in Brooklyn says, wouldn't it be better, Camo Dave, to just charge $2 for the stickers? I was, I was talking about the Camo Club stickers. I don't know where they are now. The Camo, the camo Club stickers. See them in there? Yeah. I, I said, just send me a self-addressed stamp envelope and I'll send you one. But, uh, you know, if you want to send me $2 on PayPal and send me your address in the mail, I mean, in uh, Camo Dave at GMX.com, I'll also send you one. That would help either way. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever send me a couple bucks on paypal and then send me a, a, an email at camodavidgmx.com and i'll send you some stickers or just send me a request i'll send you stickers for free if you don't want to pay i don't care send me a self-addressed stamped envelope i'm flexible right hey uh cheesy let's just call him cheesy cheesy says never talk to police you can talk yourself out of being arrested but you can also start talking yourself into it that's right they always tell you that lawyers will tell you that never talk to the police without a lawyer present but the police you know they you know again it's what a very interesting point that uh paul barger the, the bread trucker guy was pointing out that when you're pulled over you just want to get the hell out of there with a minimum of fuss and the cops ask you questions and you know you know you're you're right you don't have any you're not got contraband back there uh but you know you, you know you can't just say sorry officer I'm, my constitutional right not to answer questions and they should just let you go but you want to be friendly with the cop so you kind of said sure come on on take a take a tour around the vehicle and then who knows what will happen you know hopefully you're dealing with an honest cop Tazmod says that he wants if he comes to uh morganton he wants a burger chef hamburger Oh, wait, sorry, that restaurant carrying the Burger Chef name closed in 1996. <laughs> a Burger King burger. A Wapa, baby. And Courtney wonders why it's legal to recycle a catalytic converter. Make the recycling illegal and without an easy place to get money for them, then that would reduce the theft of catalytic converters greatly. But I guess that would be just common sense, which is rare in our government these days. Duh! Good idea, Ed. The Salford Lads Club, I guess that's the guy in England, says if you didn't have those ridiculous large wheels on your American vehicles, it wouldn't be as easy to get underneath. Yeah, you know, I mean, really. I, I don't know. You know, if your car is low to the ground, it'd be a lot harder to get the, uh, to get the uh, catalytic converter out. You know, but if you're up high in a box truck or something or, or whatever, uh, I don't know. You know, uh, Dave 2D had his catalytic converter stolen out of his Honda Element. Those are up a little bit. You know, they have a little bit more clearance there for off-the-road travel, but I don't know, man. Rip Snorton says he had his catalytic converter stolen a few years ago. I was at work, and someone stole it out of the parking lot, but they, had, they were nice, and they unbolted it instead of cutting it off. Well, nice thieves will do that. They'll just quiet. <laughs> Some nice thieves, huh? We were asking about whether uh, insurance will cover a... Uh, a catalytic converter theft. Dis Dis Demonium Tremon says, yes, minus the deductible. Some, in some insurance companies cover only the first theft. Mine was stolen last week in San Diego. $3,000 to fix. We were joking. We were joking the other day that uh, Louis the Grumpy Trucker, that that money was possibly D.B. Cooper money. 
you know, the, the guy that jumped out of the airplane back in, what, 1970 or something. You know, that money, yeah, that, the money was like brand new. Those $100 bills had the blue stripe in them. Those were new bills. Those were not bills from, from 45, 50 years ago, okay? <laughs> Terry B says, eh, any D.B. Cooper money would be dated from the 70s. That's right. It's not likely clean name brand backpack, right? That wouldn't have been available in the 70s. Yeah, we, yeah, we were joking. We were joking, Terry. That is definitely not D.B. Cooper money. <laughs> Finally, Holly Best says, I will buy advertising space on Dave's wall. That's right. If you want to buy some space there, a foot, square foot, a foot, you know, 12 by 12 will cost you $100. And we'll put you in a frame back there. It's $100 a month. And we're going to try to do what Eli, the computer guy, is doing out there at his Silicon Dojo in Asheville, North Carolina. We could sell. Look at the wall. Look at the space on my walls. Look at the space up there. It's all for sale. $100 for a 12 by 12 chunk for a month. How about it? <laughs> Dave, Dave, you're such an e-bagger. All you do is try to... We're having some fun with it, okay? Jeepers. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your Thursday. It's the 3rd of June, 2021. Blog under. <laughs>